With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Lucky Land Casino. Asking people, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Jumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby. Mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa. Take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over a hundred casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Welcome to Brums the Word with Cookery Sports, the official kit provider for Team England. And this podcast from anything but footy, well... It's the only one out there, building up to Birmingham 2022, the Commonwealth Games, and we're here every week through the summer. I'm Michael. And I'm John. And the last episode, Michael was rightly in the heart of the country and the Commonwealth Games. This week, we're at another venue, but 120 miles away from Birmingham. We'll be telling you where and why later. Also coming up, the planet's best swimmers are competing in their World Championships this week. We'll hear from a Team England trio competing in Budapest before they make the journey to Brum. Their reaction video from Tokyo was quite special and I still get people sock me and, and, and talking to me about that. I'm really sort of looking forward to it instead of being nervous and, you know, having these setbacks. People in the crowd are shouting for Team England, nobody else. Maybe a few Scots, I don't really know. Olympic champions, the lot of them. Tom Dean, James Guy and Freya Anderson. Talking of Tokyo 2020, 12 of the British team who won women's hockey bronze last year have been selected by Team England. I actually unfortunately missed the one in the Gold Coast. I um, broke my hand a week before, so I'm so excited because now it's been eight years since my last Kobe case. So in a bumper brums the word, we'll also round up the news from the Games and keep listening for that chance to download a discount on Cookery's Team England range just for you and your friends. This is Brums the Word with Cookery Sports, a podcast from anything but footy. Swimming and para-swimming was one of the first sports to confirm its athletes for Team England. 48 will be in action in total at the brand new and it's impressive Samwell Aquatic Centre. Some of them are also in action at the FINA World Aquatics Championships, which is taking place in Hungary this week before they begin their prep for the Commonwealths. And John has been catching up with the Bath-based trio all Olympic champions, as we've said, James Guy, Freya Anderson, but first, Tom Dean. Hi, Tom. How are you doing? Hi, man. Good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, good, thank you. Um, so, busy summer to come. Worlds, Commies, Europeans. Is it in that importance, in that order? Worlds, Commies, Europeans. No, I wouldn't say that's in that order of importance. I would say it's very much one at a time. And my sole focus at the moment is the World Championships. The commies, the Euros, you know, they're completely in the back of my mind. As soon as the world's, you know, come to an end, it, it, it's parked and the sole focus is the Commonwealth Games are parked and the sole focus is European. So, no, one doesn't take precedence over the other. They're all they're all exciting for their own reasons. You know, World Championships being the big one for the year in terms of um, every country will obviously be there. Um, it'll be really exciting to, to, to get out and race, you know. Um, like the American guys, a lot of the guys from kind of Japan, you know, it'll, it'll be really great to go head to head with a lot of them. And then and then we park that and it's it's a home commie games, you know, in our backyard. Um, my first ever Commonwealth Games representing Team England for the first time, racing against obviously a lot of the Scottish guys who I tend to have quite a close competition with, um, as well as obviously all the other nations and then bouncing on to a, a very nice outdoor competition in Rome. So, no, they're all, all, all special for different reasons and uh, one not more important than the other. And how are you feeling as well in the pool? You're, you're swimming pretty fast. Barcelona was was quick, but Matt Sates was a little bit quicker. 
Yeah, uh, got pipped out in Barcelona um, on that two and a three. Um, but, you know, it took him a personal best time to do that. So it was it was always going to be a big push. Um, I was very happy with my swims out there. You know, we're in the middle of a, a really hard block of training at the moment. So to go out there and some 146s, 48 mids, you know, to get three wins out of four of my races was was really, really special. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy with where I am. You know, tired racing is always tough. Uh, racing in the middle of a, a block of hard work is always, uh, always tough. But, you know, I know when we rest and taper, it's just going to get quicker and quicker. The crowds will be back for the Worlds, for the Commonwealth Games as well. I'm assuming your family will be in attendance at the Commonwealths. Will you be talking to them about how they react to any performance that you do? You, they became a bit of a Tokyo sensation at, at uh, the Olympics last year. Yeah, their reaction video from Tokyo was quite special. And I still get people soft me and, and, and talking to me about that, actually. Yeah, it was a really... A really special memory of mine is that video and, and I, I'd still like watching it today. But um, yeah, hopefully they can kind of bring that energy to to, to the world, to the, the commies, obviously, in, in, in England um, and, you know, into the celebrations into the summer. So that'll be the that'll be the most exciting part of it. And I was speaking earlier um, when I was talking about the crowds and how some people really kind of crack under that arena environment. Some people that really kind of brings us up. Um, for myself personally, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a sports person. My job is to perform in front of crowds, to deliver good performances on the day when it matters um, and, and and really use that as a source of energy and confidence. And it's exactly what I'm going to do going into these major competitions. So yeah, I can't wait. And to have a home crowd as well in Birmingham, you know, athletes get maybe one of these in their career, you know, to have a major competition in their backyard. So, um, yeah, I, I can't wait to get out there. Thanks, Tom. Wish you well. Thank you. Uh, firstly, world champs, how are you feeling? Yeah, I'm quite looking forward to them. It's definitely come around really quickly, but uh, I've had a really consistently good block of training since like January. So hopefully I can get the swims that I know I'm capable of. You know, the group in general has been, you know, swimming the house down. So I'm really sort of looking forward to it instead of being nervous and, you know, having these setbacks. Um, yeah, I think it's a real confidence boost having this training block behind me. And I was looking on the uh, British swimming website today and it, looking against your name and it says best result, Olympic champion. Is that kind of settled? Has it, has it kind of got in yet? Um, it's still a weird one for me, like, especially because, you know, I swam the heats for the relay. Um, I still don't class myself as, you know, an Olympic gold medalist, um, but it, it kind of, a lot obviously have a lot of people telling me all the time that I did deserve it and all this and um yeah I guess it's nice and it's nice to have been part of the team and help the team get through but it still does feel a bit weird to say and one more question for me the crowds will be back in Budapest and the Commonwealth Games and, and the Europeans what a difference will that make um yeah I love having a crowd there and I think it was Budapest in 2017 the world I think there was like 10,000 people there and it was amazing like it was one of the best crowds I've ever been in so hopefully it can have that kind of energy again and yeah definitely having a crowd really does spare you on yeah I really am looking forward to it it's like a really friendly environment the Commonwealth Games um and especially it being a home games I'm really excited for the crowds um and yeah all my family can come and watch which is really nice um but yeah it's definitely going to come around quickly um but definitely excited for it yeah James, John from Anything But Footy here. You mentioned about the emotion of having the crowd back. Have you got over the emotions of Tokyo and those tears? Yes, I have got over the emotions of yeah, the emotions of Tokyo and the tears. They were they are they are in the past completely. Um, but yeah, I think sometimes I always think about how good it was and how great Tokyo was. And I think one thing I sometimes I kind of dwell a lot dwell on a little bit is obviously pulling out my individual and that kind of it did hurt. But then again, it's never been done before, sacrificing my individual swim for Team GB, um, and it kind of worked out really well. We won the mixed medley, we medaled in the in the medley relay, um, and that's one thing that's never been done. I think I'm proud of myself for doing that, and actually sometimes it does hurt me saying I pulled out, but I'm proud of what I did for my country, and that's the way I kind of looked at it a little bit. Um, but yeah, I think I'm, I'm past Tokyo. It was a great experience, and I was just loving life. It was just fantastic. And you mentioned earlier what a busy summer it is with the Worlds and the Commies and, and the Europeans. How much does the Commonwealth mean for you as well, being back at home in, in England? I think, obviously, you know, it's a, it's a Commonwealth game. It's a home game, which is fantastic, right in the heart of England. Maybe my last Commonwealth Games, I don't know. Um, we'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, it'll be, it'll be fantastic. I think I was saying before to another, another interview, they were talking about 
just the crowd is there for us and nobody else. And I think that's one thing we can use to our advantage. The people in the crowd are shouting for Team England, nobody else. Maybe team, maybe a few Scots, I don't really know, but um, it's there for us. And I think it's swimming fast at the right time and trying to perform well. And I think we can go there, Team England, and do a real kind of get a good bunch of medals there. And you know, it'll be it'll be a great home games. Quick last question for me. I think you were seven when Manchester, your home t- uh, town, staged it. Do you remember anything about Manchester Commonwealth Games? Uh, I remember my PE teacher went from primary school. She came back with a T-shirt. Uh, and I remember Ian Thorpe's former freestyle on YouTube, watched that multiple times. I can't believe that was in Manchester Aquatics. Like, my house was 10 minutes away. So, I mean, to see, to see that swim, probably the greatest former freestyle we've probably ever seen, um, was just a phenomenal swim. And that was in Manchester, so yeah, amazing. But can't remember anything else. Team England's swimming team were second on the medal table at the 2018 Gold Coast Commonwealth Games with a total of 24 medals, including nine golds. And it will be very interesting to see how it goes for them in Birmingham. And of course, we wonder whether Adam Peaty will be fit. He's missing the Worlds. Team Scotland, incidentally, they've confirmed 24 swimmers and seven divers this week. Duncan Scott is one of them. The Olympic gold and silver medalist from Tokyo has pulled out of the Worlds because he's been struggling to recover properly since getting COVID-19. We wish Duncan well. As we know, 14 para swimmers will represent Team England in Birmingham this summer. And many have been winning medals in Madeira at the World Swimming Championships. Paralympic champion Hannah Russell won backstroke gold in the S1200 metres on the opening night, before then a 50 metre freestyle silver later in the week. Tokyo gold medalist Maisie Summers-Newton defended her 200 metre individual medley world title with Grace Harvey the silver, before Maisie then bagged her second world gold in the S6400 metre freestyle nearly four seconds clear of second place. Grace Harvey got her gold later in the week. Team England's Jessica Jane Applegate, Louise Finnis and Poppy Maskill on her international debut. Rebecca Redfern and Tony Shaw also all won medals and there was an unforgettable silver medal for Alice Ty, seven-time gold medalist in London in 2019, but now less than six months after having her right leg amputated, she came second in the S8 100-metre freestyle. Incredible stuff. This is Brum's The Word with Cookery Sports, a podcast from anything but footy. Still to come, where are we and why are we here? That is a question I ask myself often, but today I'm doing it in the context of the recording of anything but footy, the podcast. And it may just have something to do with the latest team announcements that keep on coming for Team England. And we're hoping you can hear us through the wind. That might give you a clue as to where we are. It's very windy, even on one of the hottest days of the year so far. Talking of Team England, don't forget, just for listening to anything but footy, you can still get your hands on the full range of official Team England merchandise. The website to go to, cookerysports.com. And if you want to save yourself 10%, we do have an exclusive discount code for you and your friends. It's ABF. 2022 and we've been modeling them this week they are really comfortable aren't they i love it i put mine on my wife said you better breathe in (laughs) thanks darling (laughs) 12 olympic bronze medalists from tokyo last summer all feature in team england women's hockey squad of 18 which has also been revealed this week they are giselle ansley grace bolsden fiona crackles maddie hinch hannah martin shona mccullin lily owsley holly pern webb izzy petter Ellie Rea, Anna Tomin and Laura Unsworth, who were all named at the home of English hockey Bisham Abbey this week. Their first game is against Ghana at the University of Birmingham on Saturday, July 30th at two o'clock. And Michael has been speaking to Lily. Yeah, it's um, incredibly exciting. I actually unfortunately missed the one in the Gold Coast. I um, broke my hand a week before, so... Um, yeah, that kind of gave me extra motivation to make sure, yeah, I was I was in this one. So I'm so excited because now it's been eight years since my last comic case. I believe the kids call it FOMO, fear of missing oh, out. Did, did you have that? Uh, oh, it was it was in the Gold Coast while I was in England rehabbing a broken hand and it snowed. And so, yeah, I think the FOMO, FOMO was like, <laughs> yeah, doesn't doesn't quite cover it, but. And I, I was just kind of looking at their Instagrams. The girls were just like in bikinis, looking at it, smashing hockey, of course. So, yeah, it was it, it was a sad time, but yeah, it's okay. 
How important is Commonwealth Games for you in terms of this kind of complicated structure where we have Great Britain hockey, Olympics, we have England and then the home nations as well? Yeah, it's, it is crazy that dynamic that we have um, and we have it often because we compete as England and then GB all through our four-year Olympic cycle and I think it's so hard for um, the Scots, the Welsh to kind of have to keep coming in and out of this programme and we're lucky as English athletes our programme stays in the same location with the same coaches and we have that consistency but it, it's bizarre for example when we play Scotland and we'll compete against our teammates who know exactly how we play exactly what corners we call exactly who takes the corners every tactic and every inch of our play and, and that kind of poses different questions to the usual uh, teams that are same, similarly ranked to um, our home nations so yeah, it definitely poses another um, another challenge, but it's also exciting too. Playing against your mates is always fun <laughs> and people that you know so well. So yeah, it's really exciting. But in terms of the actual tournament, it's it's so prestigious. I think everyone in the Commonwealth countries has heard about it and kind of know what prestige it holds. And for us, nobody here in our current squad has ever won. Um, so it's a kind of challenge that we can all do together, no matter how new people are or experienced people are. Everyone's out for their first gold. And it must be a performance advantage then that as a group, you do get to spend, as England, the majority of time together, even when you're Great Britain, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We, we're a full-time programme and that, that definitely um, bodes as well for these huge tournaments. Like, there's a reason that we've won um, three medals in the last three Olympics. Um, and I wouldn't say, no disrespect to us, but I wouldn't say it's because we're the best hockey players in the world or we produce the best hockey players in the world. It's because we're a team, we train day in, day out together, and, and we focus hard on where our weaknesses are, um, and we really excel on our strengths. And it's amazing that we can do that in this environment. And yeah, more and more talented our players are becoming. Yeah, even better, because then we're, we've, we're kind of combining our talent with, with the kind of game understanding, with the tactics that we get from being here every day. But yeah, it is amazing. And yeah, we are very, very lucky. Hockey will take place at the University of Birmingham, a place that you know well. Explain to us your links between where Commonwealth Games hockey will be held and the university for you. Yeah, it's it's so surreal. Um, I was a student there for a, a long time and I played for the University of Birmingham for six years. And so to be playing for England on those pitches, it's just, it's so surreal. I still think, don't think I'll quite realise how surreal it is until that first match, the first whistle, and it will kind of, I'll look down and it won't be a Birmingham shirt, it will be an England shirt. And and it's so special and also to share it along with um, quite a few other people that went to the University of Birmingham. I think it's going to just be so special and it's a place that means so much to me. I, I went back the other day and was in and around the uni and it just feels so nostalgic, feels so happy. I've got so many amazing memories there on and off the hockey pitch. So it's just going to be incredible the whole time in the commies being being able to walk around campus again being on that pitch um yeah it's it's so exciting will the other members of the team be leaning on you for recommendations in the selly oak area of birmingham where to go <laughs> to celebrate for example of course if anyone wants a recommendation i'm the girl um i know it well so yeah i can i can tell them where to go but it's exciting and there's there's a few people that can go but i think yeah post tournament i'll definitely be given giving some recommendations just a couple of quick questions about Birmingham as the host city I was there for the cookery sports kit launch last week the city has changed unbelievably hasn't it ahead of these games you must have experienced that having been there at uni gone away and then obviously on your visits back yeah um I think the city is incredible even when we were there we got to kind of experience how brilliant it was even more so since getting a bit older and, and kind of branching out of the university campus in Selly Oak I've seen more of what the city holds and it's absolutely incredible and I think as it goes as it goes on you've got you know canals to the jewelry quarter to the mailbox it's it, it's an amazing city and I'm so excited that you know Birmingham has the chance to showcase that to many many people around the world and also to to English English people our families that haven't ever really explored the city um yeah it's a phenomenal city and I'm I feel very proud to have spent so much time there. So final one, it must be difficult to encapsulate in a soundbite, if you like, the buzz around a city and a region 
during a big multi-sport event. You've been in and around a few. This is going to be magnificent for Brum. Yeah, it's going to be incredible. And you look at the cities that have hosted Olympics, Commonwealth Games, and the legacy goes on. I think it's such an exciting time. I think the city deserve it. They deserve to show people what it's about, the history, the culture, the pride. And I think it's going to be amazing. The buzz has been incredible, even just from being in and around England. And so, yeah, I'm so excited. Well, last time I interviewed you, we were stood by bins in Rio and you just won your gold <laughs> medal. So a much better backdrop this time. Way thank, better. <laughs> thank you so much for your company. And hopefully thank there's you. no stench of rotting Rio waste there. <laughs> Thanks so much. So that date for the diary, Saturday 30th of July. It's England against Ghana at the University of Birmingham and it will feature Lily Owsley, a former University of Birmingham student. Amazing. Now, Sophie Hamilton, Sabi Heesh, the goalkeeper, Tess Howard, Holly Hunt, Flora Peel and Lily Walker all make up the rest of the 18-strong squad. The Commonwealth's come just two weeks after the World Cup for England. And of course, England won bronze in 2018 at the Gold Coast and they've won a medal in all six times the sport has featured at the Commonwealth Games. On to other news from the Games. We'll start with athletics. We are, of course, in the heat of the Diamond League battle. We've seen Diamond League athletics in Birmingham. I was there to see the redeveloped Alexander Stadium, which will look fantastic for those Team England athletes in their cookery sports kit later on in the summer at the Commonwealth Games. I saw a really impressive performance from Keely Hodgkinson that afternoon. She's continued it as well in Oslo. She saw off the challenge of Gemma Riki and Laura Muir. Laura Muir yeah, was second in the 800 metres, and I tell you what, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Keely Hodgkinson has everything going for her to be a global superstar of not just middle distance running, not just track and field, but of sport in this country. And that's three Diamond League wins as well. Impressive, as you say. Really good stuff from Keely Hodgkinson. Watch out for her if she's selected by Team England, of course, for the games in Birmingham. Meanwhile, England's Rugby Sevens continue their warm-up in the Europe Trophy Series, with the women remaining unbeaten in Zagreb without conceding a point all weekend. That's no mean feat. They beat Italy 56-0 in the final. England's men lost 27-0 to Ireland in their final. One of the sports I'm really looking forward to at Birmingham, and I've got tickets with my five-and-a-half-year-old son, is three-on-three three basketball. He is massively still into Michael Jordan. I mean, that is someone who just transponds all sport, doesn't he? Absolutely. He, I mean, he finished 20 years ago, and he's still an absolute legend. Anyway, one net, half a normal court, right in the centre of Birmingham in Smithfield, where beach volleyball is as well. And England's women bagged a bronze and beat the world number ones, Germany, at the Belgrade National Team Tournament in three-on-three -three basketball in the past week. The men lost out to Austria in their quarterfinal, finishing sixth overall, but looking OK for Team England. You've inspired me to get my Air Jordans out of the garage to wear maybe <laughs> during the summer. <laughs> Now, you might have heard the wind. You probably heard the wind. You might well have heard a plane or two flying over. You might hear some children who are playing football just across the way. And you will, I think, have heard some birds singing as well. So the reason why, well, we're actually stood in the shadow of London's 2012 Olympic Velodrome. And we are there talking about Birmingham 2022 in the Anything But Footy podcast with Cookery Sports. Now, I know there's lots of celebrations planned for 10 years on from the Olympics and the Paralympics, but come on, we're in the wrong city. Well, we're not quite, because despite being 120 miles away, as I say, the Lee Valley Vela Park, where we are right now, will host the Commonwealth Games track cycling this summer. And Team England actually revealed their 35 rider cycling squad earlier this week. Now, I had the pleasure of heading up to Derby and spoke to some of the team, and we'll hear from them in later episodes of Brum's The Word with Cookery Sports. But with Manchester Velodrome being refurbished, and the Derby Velodrome not, quote, fitting the size and specification needed for the Commonwealth, then London, which is why we're here, Michael, will stage four days and nights of the best cycling and paracycling events from Friday, July 29th. Everyone will be delighted to have Dame Laura Kenny back in this velodrome, where, of course, she shot to fame in 2012. She heads the team once again for Team England 
in the Commonwealth Games, competing right here on the track, along with Tokyo Team Pursuit silver medalist Josie Knight, men's team sprint silver star from the Olympics Ryan Owens, and double Paralympic medalist Sophie Unwin. She's teaming up for the first time with Georgia Holt as her pilot in the tandem events. On the roads, Ethan Hayter and Matt Walls will lead Team England, and world champion Evie Richards goes in the mountain biking. It, they look, there's much more to come on the cycling. Stick with Brums the Word with Cookery Sports. Download, listen, and follow us as we count down to the Commonwealths. And it does feel like the right decision to have the cycling here at the Lee Valley Velo Park because there isn't really the need or desire to have built a velodrome from scratch, which of course would have been a very expensive undertaking in a shorter period of time to plan for these games for the city of Birmingham. So it makes sense to have it here. And actually, when you look at the experience of Gold Coast, which I was at, but I know you weren't, I mentioned that once or twice. <laughs> Have you mentioned that? <laughs> the velodrome was even further away from Gold Coast in Australia because the velodrome was in Brisbane. So it's not an unusual thing for the Team England athletes. And effectively, the Midlands has a velodrome in Derby, which is where I went to. Fit for purpose. And it's a really brilliant arena right next to Pride Park. Football, we don't mention that. But it's, it looks impressive. And that's where they're training. So Team England are training there now in the build-up to the Games. Of course, British cycling kind of has to have this weird split uh, during the Commonwealth year. So Scotland are up in Glasgow, Team Wales are down in Newport, and so Team England are in Derby. All works out perfectly. Now, in the last episode, we also promised that we would hear from the Team England table tennis stars. They are coming up, we promise, <laughs> we promise. And in the next episode, along with more team announcements from diving, judo, and the big one, netball, We'll hear from those table tennis stars. England out to defend their first ever Commonwealth Games netball title, by the way, which they won down under four years ago. Have I don't, ever don't mentioned it? Don't say it, don't say it, don't say it. I was there. This is Brum's The Word with anything but footy, brought to you with Cookery Sports, the official kit provider for Team England. For all your bespoke sportswear needs, visit cookerysports.com. So from the Olympic Park in London, which is home to the 2022 <laughs> Commonwealth Games track cycling, we'll return our focus fully on Birmingham and the West Midlands region. Stay with us for the summer. And now the footy season is really over. Tell your friends and help us count down to the Commonwealths. <laughs> Podcast Network. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Jumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. The Chumba life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Voidware prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.